half hour, the 100,000 Handicap is scheduled to be run at Santa Anita Park, California. The program, which follows Avalon Time, sponsored by the Brown and Williamson Corporation, will be interrupted so that you may hear a description of the race by Clem McCarthy. We take you now to Cincinnati. A package of Avalon cigarettes, please. Yes, sir. Oh, just a moment, sir. Don't forget your change. You never guess, but Avalon's cost you less. So why not have a Avalon with Avalon? Thank you and good evening, friends. This is Del King saying welcome to Avalon time with greetings from Red Foley and the entire company. Well, now that all the big league teams are in spring training, we find Red Skelton in Avalon umpiring one of the Chicago Cubs training games. We give you Red out at first, Skelton. <laughs> ball four, you're out. What do you mean, ball four, I'm out? Well, the bases are full and I got no place to put you. <laughs> What you get for balling me out? They're booing you now. Let him alone, folks. Don't boo him no more. He's all right. That guy's so dumb, he thinks a two-bagger is those things under Fred Allen's eyes. <laughs> oh, that was cut, Peter, but thanks. <laughs> Good enough for me, boy. I'm through umpiring. Every time, every time I umpire a game, something happens. Last year in New York, I yelled strike and 17 pickets ran out on the field. Hello there, Skelton. Hello there, microphone. Say, why don't you part your hair in the middle? Why should I part my hair in the middle? Every block should have an alley. <laughs> Hey, don't bother me, will you? I'm a busy man today. Hey, Jackson, give me one of those hot dogs, will you? With sauerkraut. Yeah. A hot dog with sauerkraut? Yeah. Okay. Unchain one with a bale of hay. <laughs> you sure like ball games, don't you, Mr. Scalp? Yes, I, uh, yes, I do. I... <laughs> My whole family are crazy about baseball. I've got a baseball dog. He catches flies, he wears a muzzle, and he bats for home every time he sees the catcher. <laughs> oh, I'm heading for the shoes. These wagons are killing me. <laughs> oh, I look at... I have a brother that's playing baseball on one of the big uh, government teams. <laughs> He's got a lot on the ball, but the chain's holding him back. <laughs> one day he was standing out on third, and a guy hit a pop fly, so he started to run home, but they got him as he was going over the wall. <laughs> Oh, he's a great baseball player. The one time they were playing uh, night baseball and the lights went out. And the convicts were so crooked they played three innings without a ball. <laughs> I understand that Roosevelt found out how much they made at baseball last season, so he's going to throw out Congress and put in the New York Yankees. <laughs> Uh, sure There's your hot dog, Mr. Skelton. Mm -hmm. And I'll bet the poor thing thought I was Thomas Dewey the way I grilled it. <laughs> hey, this hot dog's got a feather in it. Uh, that's all right. It's probably a bird dog. <laughs> uh, well, look who's coming across the baseball diamonds, folks. It's Red Foley, the singing star of Avalon time. Hey, hello there, Skelton. Hello, Foley. Come on, I'll buy you a hot dog. No, I promised the boys I'd sing them a song, and here it is. What are you going to sing, Red? Uh, singing in the saddle. Well, that fits baseball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm singing in the saddle. Guide me from above. I'm a heading for heaven. And love I've been rounding up the long lost dogies Out on the lone prairie Now I'm heading for my ranch house heaven Where she waits for me I'm singing in the saddle Singing all the way For the roundup is over today I'm singing in the saddle To 
the stars above I'm heading for heaven and love To the rhythm of the hooves I'm humming Get along, get along, old pal There's a prairie gal who knows I'm coming Waiting beside the old corral I'm a singing in the saddle, guide me from above. I'm a heading for heaven and love. Oh, Pretty, I like hello it. Hello there, Skelton. Well, hello, Peter Grant. Boy, you look like a happy man. Bet your life there, mate. Say, uh, this hasn't been cut, too, has it? No, go right ahead, Peter. Uh, step <laughs> over to the cigarette stand here with me a moment, will you? Yeah, okay. Well, here we are. Uh, a carton of Avalon's, please. Oh, a carton? It used to be a pack. Well, I, I'm sorry, sir. We have only seven packs left. Gosh, the way these Avalon's sell, they must be all right. All right? <clears throat> here it comes, Louisville. Oh, uh, tell them about them, Peter. My friend? <laughs> My friend, the reason you sell so many Avalon cigarettes is because your customers realize they're getting more for their money. Yeah, they're getting more for the money. They get finest quality cigarettes for three to five cents less than other popular price brands. And make no mistake about it, Avalon's are finest quality. Yeah, Avalon's are the finest quality. Remember that, brother. <laughs> In fact, you could want no finer quality cigarettes, regardless of price. Regardless of brand. Reg Thank you, Red. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, that was your line, wasn't it? <laughs> okay, Peter, keep it up. You're getting a crowd around you now. Well, Avalon cigarettes are 100% union made from the world's choicest Turkish and domestic tobaccos. They are real cigarettes, friends. That's why you'd never guess they cost you less. All right, Peter? Right, Red. Superfine tobaccos, a really superior blend at a real saving. Yes, sir. So the next time, why not ask for Avalon? Ring that cash register, brother. What is it, class? And, and don't forget your change! Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> not bad, huh? Say, if I didn't know you better, Peter, I'd swear you intended that to be a commercial <laughs> announcement. See you later, Rat. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Peter. So long. Uh, hey, Jackson, give me another one of those hot dogs, will you? Gee, I don't know what's the matter with me. I can't get enough of those hot dogs. Oh, I wouldn't worry about it. You're probably just a glutton. <laughs> Look, this save me a lot of trouble. Just give me a litter of those pups, will you? <laughs> hello, Mr. Skelton. Oh, hello, Miss Still. Oh, my, you look pretty enough to kiss. Yeah, and you look dumb enough to try it. Yeah. <laughs> my goodness, where did you get that suit? What's the matter with it? Well, nothing, only it's the first checkerboard I've ever seen with patched pockets. Yeah. <laughs> matter with a suit? Why, it's the latest thing. The only thing I don't like about it, the pants are a little tight under the armpit. <laughs> I'm gonna get my pajamas in the pockets. There's no room for anything else. <laughs> oh, hello, Professor. My, my. How are you, Mr. Scout? Glad to see you, Hans. Ah, you look great tonight, Professor. I've Thank seen you. people with bags under their eyes, but yours look like steamer trunks. <laughs> Oh, uh, the question must be a Lulu to have you to get away from your program. It, well, what is the question, Professor? Come, come, what's on your mind besides a toupee that looks like a wet rabbit? Oh. <laughs> well, the question is, uh, what is a hot dog? A hot dog? A hot dog is a hamburger with tights on. <laughs> Thank you so much. Uh, when you go horseback riding, uh, horseback riding, you get a headache? <laughs> yes, I do. Well, with, with me, it's vice versa. <laughs> Oh, that professor's a great guy. The only thing, he's, he owes so much mon money. <laughs> I'm picking up his messes now. <laughs> he owes so much money that his creditors follow him to theaters on bank night. <laughs> I don't know, this routine's pretty tired. I think I'll go get some shed eye. Uh, edit, will you, Phil? <laughs> Thank you. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we wish to thank the Brown and Williamson Corporation, makers of Avalon cigarettes, for permitting us to interrupt Avalon time so that the National Broadcasting Company can bring you a description of the actual running of the Santa Anita Handicap at Santa Anita Park, California. You will now hear Clem McCarthy, direct from Santa Anita. One moment, please. We welcome to the network those Eastern listeners who have just joined us here at Santa Anita Park in California for the fifth running of the Santa Anita Handicap. The horses are right up there at the starting point, and so I'm going to give you the bare facts about this big race. As you know, it's a mile and a quarter, $100,000 added, and the winner will take down $91,100. Now, for your information, those of you who are interested in the various post positions, how they will line up, here they are from the inside position to the outside. Two horses starting outside the gate, 14 stalls in the gate, and there being 16 horses running, then two of them must start on the outside. Here they are, on the inside, Quick Devil with uh, Carl Beerman in his saddle, Thanksgiving with Jackie Westrope, He'll Fly with Harry Richards, Specify Charlie Corbett, in fifth position, Jacola with Moose Peters, just in from Florida, Main Man with Georgie Wolf, Sautiado, the South American horse with Ralph Neves, Frexo with Freddie Miller, Gosum with Alan Gray, Witch C with uh, Basil James, Cravat with Bobby Robertson, War Minstrel with Nicky Wall, Today, Silvio Cucci, Melodist with Sammy Runnick, Congressman with Johnny Longdon, and Kayak the Second, another South American horse with Johnny Adams. Now then, in regard to the popularity of these horses with the crowd this afternoon, in just the way that they rate with these people who are trying to, uh, to pick the winner, the most popular horse is the entry of Sortiato and Kayak, the two South American horses owned by Charles S. Howard, who also happens to be the owner of Seabiscuit. And next in popularity to them comes Cravat. Now, I would say that about one out of every four people here today like that South American entry of Kayak and Sortiato, and about one out of every uh, six like Cravat. And after him, the next in popularity, very close up, is Specify, then which C, then the entry of Today and Gosum. And then the others not so popular in the order of their popularity are Main Man and Quick Devil, Thanksgiving, Heel Fly, uh, Jack Cola, War Minstrel and Melodist as an entry, Congressman, and the rank outsider is Frexo, the French horse, owned by Raoul Walsh. Now the horses are up there in their position, and they won't be long at the post, I'm pretty sure. Uh, incidentally, this is a great sight to stand up here on this roof and look out across this parking space, easily the largest parking space of any race course in America, possibly in the world. It might even be the largest parking space for any great sports event. I, today, at a quarter after 12, I counted myself a block of a 1,000 cars out here in the parking space, and then I got busy trying to multiply that, and I finally wound up with what I thought to be a little short of 20,000 cars uh, at a quarter after 12. Now, they were still pouring in at half past two, and the capacity of the place is supposed to be 22,000 cars. It's jammed right to the gates, and over on the far side, the cars are out in other parking places that do not belong to the race course. The total gross value of the race with 16 starters is 137,200. The winner will take down 91,100. The crowd last year was 60, estimated at 63,000. I believe that's official. And I know that this crowd today is very close to 70,000. It cost $100 for each of these horses and all the others of the 107 that were entered back in December to get into the race, $100. Then yesterday morning, when the horses were named to start, it cost them $250 for that privilege. Two of them withdrew, and that left 16 that paid an additional $750 to start. The association adds $100,000 to the race and gives the winning trainer $10,000, which brings the whole grand total up to $137,200. Now we're going to talk about those horses stepping into the gate. On the inside there is Quick Devil, and next to him is Thanksgiving, and there's uh, Heel Fly. Ah, uh, there comes uh, Quick Devil into his position. Thanksgiving is not yet in his. Heel Fly is acting all right. He's going to have that, uh, that uh, hood over him, I think. Yes, he has the bandage over his eyes. That's the only way he'll walk into a stall gate. Specify has not yet made up his mind to go in. Way on the outside, Kayak in the outside position is acting okay. Congressman is next to him, 
our melodist out there in the outside stall. I'll specify is way out there behind. A uh, war minstrel just jumped through the gate. All the others are up. Ah, ah, there. He'll fly. He dived out. He thought he anticipated a start and jumped right out of the gate. Eddie Thomas is standing there with one foot on the rail. Ah, ah, he'll fly. Just tipped off his rider, uh, Harry Richards. But Harry's all right. He's going to get right back in the saddle. Just needs a little help there. Boy's giving him a leg up now. He'll fly wheeled very fast and caught Harry napping. You know, these modern jockeys ride with their stirrups so short. It's uh, remarkable sometimes that a horse doesn't jump right out from under them. They get very little grip with their heels. However, they are the jockeys. They have to do the riding so they should know how and whatever style suits them best. And after all, the jockey that can get down here doesn't make any difference what his style is. He must be a good race rider. Harry Richards is waiting now. Now they're giving him a leg up. He'll be back and he'll fly a saddle in just a second. Kayak is standing all right in his position. And um, there is uh, Jacola is all right. She just walked into her stall. Uh, main man. Main man is acting very good. Frexo is quiet. Uh, Melodist is now cutting up a little on the outside. Kayak is behaving beautifully. Specify doesn't want to go into his stall yet. Waiting patiently on Specify. He has got the, uh, Specify has got the fourth position there. Yes, sir, he's right next to Heel Fly, in between Heel Fly and Jacola. And um, Thanksgiving has just walked into his stall and uh, tried to walk out, but his jockey stopped him in time. They're all in there now, everybody except uh, Heel Fly and Specify. They might break any instant. No, Heel Fly doesn't want any part of it yet. He's waiting for Specify to go in his stall. All the other horses are acting like, uh, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, there's one lady in here, Jacola. She didn't do so well in her initial start here recently, but oftentimes a horse needs a race, and with that race under his belt, will run much better. Look out, look out, look out, look out now, look out. They're all straight, but are they ready? That's up to Eddie Thomas. We can't, no, specify, backed out of his stall. He backed out, and which C jumped out of his stall on the, it, to the front of his stall and had to go back through, is now turning to walk up in again. Specify is out, heel fly is in there with that bandage over his eyes, acting very quietly. Now look out, Specify is walking in, be careful, be careful. If he turned, no, he wouldn't come in. He wouldn't come in, he probably would have had a step at the gate if he had. And Eddie Thomas is not letting any horse take a step at this if he can help it. He can't help it if uh, some uh, jockey is unprepared or the horse himself is standing there flat-footed and can't get away, that's not Eddie's fault. What he's watching for is some quick, alert jockey not to take a step at him and beat him away from there. Look out, look out. Look out. No, nope. Specify came in with a rush and then uh, took out again. They, uh, uh, they've been at the post now, roughly speaking. They've been there just uh, four minutes, that's all. Which is not bad for a field of 16 horses. Everybody there's Gosum. He just stepped out of his stall, but that isn't bad. Uh-uh, he took a kick at somebody but missed. So that's okay. Miller just came back in with stall. Look out. They're all... Nope. Specify had jumped out. If Specify had stood still, then I believe we... Uh-oh, oh, Miller just went right up like a good old circus horse. Went right up there... Uh, high up on his hind legs. But the jockey stayed right on his back and brought him down. And the lead boy is leading him in. Now specify as acting so badly that they've taken specify to the outside. They're tired of waiting for him. And now Quick Devil is cutting up just to show that nobody has a monopoly on it. Now specify is way here on the outside and still cutting up and whirling. Now we got to watch specify here on the outside. All the others will take care of themselves. They got to get him straight. It's specify on the extreme outside, outside the gate. No petition, no nothing. Just whirling around there, doing as he pleases, acting badly. Uh, look out now. Uh-uh, no. He just does not want to face this way. Look out, look out. Look out, it might. No, no. Specify, refuse. Look, be careful. No, no. He will not. That's a strange thing about that horse. He will not face in this direction. Whirl and twist. He'll do anything else you want him to, but he won't face down here. He seems to want to get a bust at the, at the uh, start. Look out now. No, no. Again, specify. Was it false? Watch him, watch him. No, no, specify would have been as good as left if he'd have called at them. You know, when that bell rings, they're on their way. And look out now, watch, watch him. No, now again, specify. And which C jumped out of his stall? Jacola turning around, main man turning. No, now they're all ready except specify. Specify, no, up there, which C backed out of his stall that time? He took it the other way. Now look out, if specify straightens, we're going to leave there. No, boy, you can't do that way. No, no. I re, uh, uh, now watch, 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 no. He just hauls that assistant starter around like he was a little bit of a boy. Now he's turned him once more. Look out. They're off, and they're running, and the start was okay. Everybody got away except Quick Devil. On the inside, Thanksgiving is stepping right to the front, and they're going to come down past here with Thanksgiving, head and head with the leaders, but coming across fast from the outside and about to take the lead. 
but taking the lead is Whitch C with Specify coming way over from the outside and running right beside him. And so they pass the stand with Whitch C in the lead by half a length. And Specify is second. A quick devil is third. Thanksgiving is fourth. Main Man has moved up there and taken third place away from the other horse. And now as they go around the turn, it is Whitch C slipping away by a length and a half. And leading into that turn by a length and a half is Specify is second. Main Man is third. Thanksgiving fourth on the inside. Kayak is on the outside in about sixth place, way out there. Jacola is far back, and so is Heelfly. Frexo is last. Now they've got three quarters of a mile to come, and it is Witch C and Specify running neck and neck, two lengths ahead of Main Man, who is two lengths ahead of Kayak. And then comes Thanksgiving, Sordiato, and today moving up fast on the outside. Jacola is about eighth, and Congressman is seventh. And the rest of them are in behind. Which C is opened up again now by a length and a half. Leading, have got three, half a mile to come now. Which C is leading by a length and a half. Specify is second by a length and a half. Main Man is third by two lengths. Kayak is fourth by a length. And today is fifth. Jacola is now moving up into sixth place. And Thanksgiving is seventh. And Sordiato is moving up. And now Specify is challenging Witch C in the middle of the last turn. They've got three-eighths of a mile, 600 yards, 500 yards to come. But Kayak on the outside is making his move into third place. And now, with a quarter of a mile to come, 400 yards, it's Specify by a neck. No, Witch C by a neck. And Specify is second. Kayak out in the middle of the track, challenging third. On the inside, Main Man is in tight quarters. But Kayak on the outside is taking the lead. Kayak is now leading by a length. Kayak is cutting away. Which C is hanging on gamely. Main Man is getting through. Kayak is driving hard, and he wins by a length and a half. Kayak, which C second. Main Man third. Specify fourth. Today, fifth. Jacola sixth. Cravat seventh. Gosum eighth. War Minstrel ninth. Frexel tenth. The last horse was Melodist, and the time of the race was 2 1 and 2 fifths for the mile and a quarter. 2 1 and 2 fifths for the mile and a quarter. Uh. That uh, mile and a quarter in two, one and two fifths is one fifth of a second faster than stagehands record last year. Kayak, one handily, although Adams took no chances, rode him out to the last jump. Kayak was the favorite with a crowd, and I know you could hear the roar of that crowd that his victory was tremendously popular. Melodis was the last horse to finish. He didn't pull up lame or anything else. He just got tired. He's the first horse back here to unsaddle. Kayak is way over on the turn there, easing up with the lead boy about to take him. The boy, the experts who... Uh, who looked at the race carefully, had it right, that at 110 pounds, Kayak was so uh, in so nicely that if he was as good a horse as his workouts and his races indicated, that he would be a very hard horse to beat this afternoon. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there isn't any doubt about the finish of this race. I've given you the result. Kayak was first. Which C was second. Mean Man finished third. That is how they finished in the $100,000 Santa Anita Handicap run here at Santa Anita Park in California. We thank the Brown and Williamson Corporation, makers of Avalon cigarettes, for giving up a portion of Avalon time so that we could bring you the actual running of the Santa Anita Handicap direct from the racetrack at Santa Anita Park, California. We return you now to the Avalon Time program at Cincinnati. This is Del King saying welcome back to Avalon Time. Now in just a moment, Phil Davis and his boys will beat out Pagan Love Song. But first, a very important announcement. Next Saturday, Avalon Time will come to you at a new time, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and 7.30 Central Standard Time. We hope that you'll be with us. Okay, Phil, beat out a bit of Pagan, you Pagan.
and gentlemen, the other day I actually saw this scene take place. Bill, I think I found something. Here, try one of these cigarettes. And what kind are they? Avalons. See what you think of them. It's light. Say, that's a smooth cigarette. Nice mild smoke, too. Yep, it's all right. <laughs> You know, they cost several cents less than that popular price brand you smoke. Really? Why, I can hardly believe it. Yes, friends, you'd never guess they cost you less because Avalon's are positively highest quality cigarettes, 100% union made from the world's finest Turkish and domestic tobaccos. Yet these superior cigarettes cost three to five cents less per package than any other popular priced brands. When you can get Avalon's outstanding quality at this exceptional economy... Why pay more? The next time, forget price habit. Give your thrifty judgment a chance. Ask for Avalon cigarettes. friends, that's about all the time we have now. But remember, when you ask for Avalon cigarettes... Don't forget your change. Yes, Avalon cigarettes, dear friends, cost several cents less than others. You too can save this difference like all of us Avalon brothers. Each pack is wrapped in cellophane, each pack is union made. No wonder folks from coast to coast say Avalon's lead the parade. So mine are always Avalon, attention, please. Remember, next Saturday evening, the Brown and Williamson Tobacco Corporation will present Avalon Time at a new time, 8.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, 7.30 p.m. Central Standard Time. Del King speaking. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Avalon Time originated in the studios of the Nation Station and has reached you through the National Broadcasting Company. W-E-A-F, New York. The National Broadcasting Company presents Lives of Great Men, a new series on great leaders in human progress presented by Dr. Edward Howard Griggs, distinguished lecturer, critic, and author of The Soul of Democracy and many other books. In his talks, Dr. Griggs is building a story of civilization based on outstanding characters through the ages and how each one influences his own in future times. This evening, Dr. Griggs will discuss Carlyle, the man of letters as prophet 